Okay guys, today we are going to be talking about the cell cycle, more specifically mitosis and what happens if the cell cycle goes wrong. So you should be filling in your notes organizer as I go through this PowerPoint. Now there are some differences in the way that the cell cycle happens in a, in a unicellular and a multicellular organism. In a unicellular organism you have this process called binary fission. So we're talking about bacteria and protists here. And that simply is just asexual reproduction. The parent splits in order to form two unicellular organisms. In a multicellular organism, and this is what we're going to be focusing on, the cell actually goes through that entire cell cycle process and the individual cells are being duplicated in order to heal injuries, in order to for the organism to grow. Now before we can talk about how a cell divides, let's talk about why a cell needs to divide. Why would we need to make more cells? Well, cells take in nutrients and let out waste. And as they do this, they go through their normal daily processes, the, the cell is going to grow, it's going to get larger. Well, the problem is that the volume increases at this exponential rate, faster than, than the surface area increases. So basically what that means is that the inside grows faster than the outside, which means the outside can't support the cell. And what is the outside of the cell? The outside of the cell is the cell membrane, remember? And you, we know what the job is of the cell membrane, it's to uh, move materials in and out of the cell. So as the cell grows, its volume increases much more rapidly than the surface area. So what's the problem with that? What's the problem with the outside not being able to support the inside? Well, you're not going to be able to get in the things that you want to get in because you're not going to be able to get in enough nutrients and you're not going to be able to get out the things you need to get out. So the cell is basically going to fill with waste and not have enough nutrients to support it. Okay, so this is numbers one and two on your notes organizer. So the cell cycle, cell division, prevents the cell from becoming too large to support itself. This is how you are able to grow. This is how when you are injured, your body is able to heal itself. And that whole process of growing and dividing is called the cell cycle. So the overall purpose is a cycle of growing and dividing. Um, which allows a cell to duplicate its contents and then produce two new daughter cells. So the cell cycle is a series of events in which a cell duplicates its contents and divides to produce two new daughter cells. So why in the world would a cell need to duplicate its insides before it divides? Why can't we just split the cell right down the middle? If we split the cell right down the middle, then we end up with cells that have half of the material, right? Well, we know that doesn't happen. We know that we end up with two identical cells. A skin cell is going to be used to make a new skin cell. Well, the only way that can happen is if you first duplicate its inside. So you got to duplicate all the organelles, you got to duplicate the DNA, and then you can divide it so that you end up with two new identical daughter cells. Two. And this is just showing you that different cells divide at different rates. Liver cells, for example, divide about once every year or so, which is why damage to the liver is such a problem. Because you're basically, um, when you're taking in toxins such as alcohol, you're dam damaging the liver before it can replace itself with new cells, which is how you end up with things like cirrhosis here in this picture. Okay, epithelial cells, on the other hand, line your, line your gut or your intestinal area, and those divide more than once a day. So think about why that's the case, why you would want those cells to divide a lot and re replace themselves a lot. To think about that type of environment. It's very acidic. The cells are constantly being, needing to be replaced. So their cell cycle is very short. Okay, so we're going to talk about the cell cycle, and I want you to remember this phrase down the side here, I, P, M, A, T, C. I is referencing interphase, P, M, A, T is representing the stages of mitosis, and then C is cytokinesis. So I, P, M, A, T, C. So big picture here, what's happening in each of those stages of the cell cycle. Well, you have interphase, which is where the cell is just carrying out normal functions, it's growing, um, this, the cell membrane is moving things in and out of the cell, and then the big thing here, this is where the DNA is being replicated. So it's growing, it's carrying out normal cell functions, it's replicating its DNA in interphase. Then you have the, nu the division of the nucleus, or more specifically mitosis, and this is where the nucleus and all of the nucleus insides um, divide. So that would be PMAT prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And then last up you have cytokinesis, which is the cutting of the cell, um, where you actually have the division of the cytoplasm and you have two new entirely separate cells. 
So I, P, met C. So let's get into the nitty gritty details here. So let's first talk about interphase. Interphase actually has three parts to it. Now this whole section here is interphase. Then you have mitosis, and then you have cytokinesis. So what is the stage of the cell cycle where the cell spends the majority of its time just by looking at this picture? It's going to be interphase. That's number six on your notes organizer. The cell spends a majority of its time just carrying out normal cell functions, growing, um, rep de replicating the DNA, and then preparing for mitosis. Okay, so let's start off by talking about the G1 stage of interphase. This is the growth stage where the cell is growing and just performing normal cell functions, letting in nutrients, letting out waste. The second stage of interphase is the S stage, and S stands for synthesis, and that word synthesis means like to put together, you're synthesizing something, you're putting it together, so what are you putting together in this case? That would be the DNA. So the S stage of interphase is where the DNA is being synthesized or replicated. Okay, and then the last stage of interphase is the G2 stage or GAP2 stage, and this is sort of like a checkpoint. So right before you go through mitosis, which is the, you know, the dividing of the nucleus, the division of the cell, you're going to want to make sure that you've done everything correctly so far. You've duplicated your DNA correctly, and you are ready to, to divide the cells. So this is the GAP2 stage of interphase. Okay, now before we talk about prophase, there's some vocab worms, you, vocab wor words you need to become familiar with. And one of those words is chromosomes, and that's probably a word that you've heard plenty of time before, times before. So DNA normally exists in this form right here. It looks like this. And that's this sort of long, winding, double helix form called chromatin. Now, when you get to prophase, or right before a nucleus is going to start dividing its contents, um, the chromatin condenses into actual chromosomes. Okay, so chromosomes are condensed chromatin. So that long winding DNA sort of coils very, very tightly and becomes a chromosome. So it's still made up of DNA, so it's still carrying around genetic information, and it's being used to pass on to, to future generations of cells. Okay, so here's a chromosome. They, they exist as sort of this X-like structure. Well, a chromosome is actually made up of two sister chromatids. These all words, they all sort of sound alike, which is why I had to do vocab this unit. So two sister chromatids are held together by a centromere, and that's what makes up a chromosome. Okay, so here's a chromatid right here. Here's a chromatid right here. That little red dot is the centromere. That's what's holding the chromatids together to form a chromosome. Now, this is what you've heard about before. You know that, that humans have 46 chromosomes or um, 23 pairs of chromosomes. In every single one of our cells, except for our sex cells, we have 46 chromosomes. So those cells are called diploid, meaning they have two sets. Um, humans, however, in their sex cells only have 23 chromosomes. Why would you need to have half the number of chromosomes in your sex cells as you would in all of your other cells? Because you want, when, you're, when the egg and the sperm come together, you want them to have a full set of 46, right? So you have to have 23 in the egg, 23 in the sperm to total 46. So we call those cells haploid cells. Okay, so you should have filled out number 9 on your notes organizer. Um, and then number 10 and 11. And those body cells are also called somatic cells. This is number 11 on your notes organizer. So we have 46 chromosomes in human somatic cells, which is every cell in your body except for your sex cells, and those are called gametes. So you have 23 chromosomes in your gametes. So here is just another diagram. You have your homologous chromosome that has been duplicated here. So these are identical copies. There's a sister chromatid, there's a sister chromatid. And then eventually those chromatids are gonna separate, and we'll talk about that in just a second, so that you end up with one cell that has each duplicated chromatid, right? So that's how you end up with cells that have a full set of chromosomes instead of a half set. Here is what's called a karyotype, which is just a map of somebody's chromosomes. You can see the 23 pairs here. The 23rd pair is your uh, sex chromosomes. This person has two X chromosomes. What do you think this person is, gender-wise? Two X chromosomes. That would be a female. 
Okay, so I talked about before in interphase you have these different checkpoints, and that's what's being illustrated here with these little stop signs. So at each stage, um, the cell sort of stops itself and says, have I done everything correctly? And that's really good because if something has gone wrong, you don't want the cell to keep duplicating. You want the cell duplication process to stop right there. So we have these things called cell regulators, which are basically chemical signals telling the cell either to continue dividing or to stop. So cyclin is one of those chemical signals that binds to enzymes to control the cell cycle. Different cyclins and cyclin-dependent kinases control the steps of the cell cycle, meaning when you get to the end of a stage, um, the, check, the cyclin checkpoint is going to say, okay, should the cell continue on through the rest of the cell cycle or should we stop here? All right, so we just spent a bunch of time talking about interphase. Now we are going to talk about mitosis, which is actually the division of the nucleus and its contents. And this also has four phases. And remember how I told you to remember I, P, met, C? Now we're getting into P, met, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. I, P, met, I was interphase, P, met is mitosis, and then we're going to talk about cytokinesis, C. I, P, met, C. Okay, so the first phase of mitosis and the longest phase of mitosis, not the longest phase of the cell cycle, that was uh, interphase, but the longest phase of mitosis is prophase. And this is where you actually have that chromatin we just talked about, the long winding DNA condensing into chromosomes. And then the nucleus starts to disappear. These are the two big things. So you can see the nucleus disappearing here. That's why the nuclear membrane looks sort of dotted. It's breaking down. And then we have our chromosomes that have formed. Okay, those are the big pictures things that are happening in prophase. So this is number 16 on your uh, notes organizer. Draw a little picture and then describe what's happening. You also have the formation of these structures called centrioles, which produce spindle fibers. And spindle fibers are going to become very important in the next couple of phases. So in prophase, the cell is preparing for division um, by breaking down the nuclear membrane and forming the chromosomes. Now, metaphase is really easy to remember because meta sounds like middle. So this is the phase where the chromosomes line up along the middle of the cell. So they're sort of pushed by the spindle fibers. Um, the spindle fibers are going all the way across the cell and attaching to those centromeres. So metaphase is easy. The chromosomes line up along the middle of the cell. After they line up along the middle of the cell, the chromatids get pulled apart. So you can see chromatids being pulled to the opposite ends of the cell here. The spindle fibers are basically like winding in or shortening, pulling the chromosomes apart into the chromatids, and the chromatids are heading to the opposite ends of the cell here. And here's a great picture of a cell in uh, anaphase. Okay, the last stage of mitosis is telophase, and this is when the chromatids have officially reached the poles of the cells and the chromosomes unwind back into chromatin, back into that loose DNA. The spindle fibers are all breaking down, the, the centrioles are disappearing, um, but the nuclear membrane is reappearing here. Okay, so we don't quite have full, two full cells just yet. That doesn't happen until um, cytokinesis. So the nucleus is reforming, the cell membrane is beginning to pinch in in animal cells, that's called a cleavage furrow here, you can see it in that picture. And then when the cytoplasm is actually cut, that is when the cell goes through cytokinesis. Now there are differences in cytokinesis in an animal cell and a plant cell. In an animal cell, like I said, you have the formation of the cleavage furrow, which is simply the uh, pinching in of the cell membrane. And then in the plant cell, you have the formation of the cell plate between the two daughter cells, and that's what becomes the cell wall. That's why plant cells are sort of stuck together like bricks, because they have the cell plate that forms, whereas the animal cell just has the cleavage furrow, and then they pinch apart into two you know, totally separate cells. So that is number 17 on your notes organizer. Okay, there's cleavage furrow forming. There's a cell plate forming and a plant cell. Here's the animal cell. You can see the cleavage furrow, cytokinesis. Here's the formation of the cell plate just beginning to form there in telophase. Here it is in cytokinesis, the giant cell plate that separates the cell wall. So take a look at these pictures and sort of quiz yourself on the stages of, of mitosis. Okay, now I'm going to go through these slides so you can get your definitions, but I'm actually not going to talk about cancer until um, we're in class. So write down these definitions on your notes organizer, and then we will discuss them more in class.